Hello and welcome back to uh, Nigel uh, TV, uh, the green flag, to our second show. Uh, we're coming to you from our uh, home here in Killeen, in Oak Park in Tralee, and uh, looking out over the beautiful uh, Slevemish Mountains on a beautiful day. Absolutely fantastic here today. My name is Dennis Shukru, and I'll be hosting the shows here to have news, chat and information, and anything else to do with the uh, general Nigel community. So don't forget to subscribe, and if anyone wants to leave a comment, we'll get back to you. Uh, joining me here today is uh, Maeve Barry, well-known uh, uh, legendary um, um, player for uh, Nigel Senior Ladies Team. And I'm just looking at her um, uh, her, her resume here. Uh, All Ireland winner in 2013, Senior Ladies uh, player, Intermediate Champion, player for Kerry, Division One 2018, County and Munster Intermediate, and also played international basketball. Welcome, Maeve. Thanks, Dennis. After all that. And uh, also here today, I have, uh, uh, beside Maeve, his own duty, the senior uh, men's team um, captain. And don't forget, uh, uh, Owen raised a trophy in 2020 above in Crow Park. Uh, before we join our guests, uh, I just have a few results over the weekend to be given out. Back to you shortly. Hello, and welcome back. And uh, first thing I'd like to start with is Maeve, how are you? And Owen, how are you? Uh, Maeve, um, can you give me an idea, when did you start with the club? Um, I suppose I started back when I was about seven or eight. Um, I suppose the ladies side of the club was only getting started then, so it was a very exciting time. And then I played up until under 12 with the boys as well and haven't looked back since. Um, I suppose the highlight being in 2013, we won a junior All-Ireland. Um, and at the moment now we're playing senior football, so it's, it's been brilliant. And I know you're in training for the, at the moment for, for, for the forthcoming senior. Uh, how's that going? Yeah, very good. We're training with the last few weeks. We've been inside in the gym twice a week and Eddie has us out running now in the field. So it's, it's great to get back into it and looking forward to the season ahead. Maeve, you've had many highlights really over the years uh, playing with the Nigel team and indeed with the county team and indeed you're still playing basketball. I know you have a game tonight <laughs> yeah. uh, playing for, Saint, uh, playing for uh, Team Garvey's uh, so we'll have you all here in, in plenty of time <laughs> for that. But, do you know, I, I look back at the highlights, I remember even myself looking back at from a person who, who lived the highlights like, you know, days like up that day up in Cretty Yard, up in Leash, like, you know, when you won the All-Ireland and, uh, do you know, your tough days as well against Dunedin and things things like that, like, um, do you know, just give a rundown of what your highlights over those years were. Um, yeah, well, I suppose the, the All-Ireland Final, the Junior All-Ireland Final definitely stands out in 2013. I was actually injured myself, so it's a bit bittersweet, but definitely for the club it was huge, and I, I suppose since then we've really pushed on. Um, we were Intermediate County Champions and Munster Champions in 2018. Um, and it was actually, it came full circle really, it was Dunedin and Connolly Gales over in Edinburgh that beat us in the All-Ireland quarter final by a point. So. On that weird pitch yeah, that nobody was, thought was a Gaelic yes, football pitch, yeah, yeah, yeah I heard yeah, about that. Yeah, I suppose yeah. since then yeah, yeah. we've, we've yeah, pushed yeah. on to senior and hopefully yeah. now this year we're, we're looking forward to the season ahead. Yeah, later on we'll talk about fitness and things, I talked to you on as well later on about fitness and things like that, like you know, but uh, does it make it easier for you leading into a Gaelic football season, having trained through all winter really like you know, and I presume Liam Collett puts you through your paces when you're training for basketball, like you know, there's always been a tie between basketball and football from that point of view. Um, do you know, when you look at the other players on the team who are coming at it cold, do you know, have you an advantage there when it comes into training in the, in the, in the summer from the winter? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know about an advantage, but it definitely helps just with even fitness and just ball handling and stuff that there's definitely a crossover. I think that's becoming, in the media and everything, it's kind of, mm. people are beginning to realise that. Mm. So one definitely kind of leads itself to the other. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's great to be kind of kept going and kept active and stuff during the winter and then I suppose at this time of year especially kind of gets a bit tricky when, when they both overlap but not for long but yeah. definitely it's, it helps yeah, especially yeah, yeah. and you're looking forward up. to the year yeah looking forward to it now yeah, yeah. Um, we're se in senior championship again now this year so yeah. hopefully like the goal it would be to win a county, county and I suppose like everything else in the, all other age groups and senior and junior and underage the last two years were a bit unreal really like at least you can look forward to a complete season this year yeah I suppose it's been the first proper kind of in season or pre-season early in the last two years last year was a bit more normal than the year before but I'm definitely looking forward to the year ahead now yeah um, yeah yeah what would you like to win over the next few years um well a county final anyway yeah you're talking about co county level yeah, really like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um 
I suppose it, it's been quite competitive over the last few years, and we've been quite competitive as well since we've come yeah. up to senior. So, yeah. um, I think this year now we've a good, we've a nice team. Like we've a good mix of young players and more experienced players, and the last few years will hopefully stand to us. So, yeah. winning a county final would definitely yeah. be He's our goal for this year. Be yeah. good for us all, <laughs> yeah. Maeve. Be good for us all. Thank you, Maeve. Thanks for Thank all you. that. Okay, we're going to go over to uh, the latter results now, which will flash up the screen. Thank you. Hello and welcome back. And um, they were the lottery results. Um, you were particularly interested in those lottery results, Owen, were you? Yeah, yeah, very lucky. I won uh, 20 quid there, so on my birthday weekend, also, very happy. And it's the night of the, uh, tonight actually is the night of our dinner dance. So, Owen, I'll be at the bar, ready to wait for you. <laughs> you would have all the money in your pocket. Uh, Owen, how are you? And welcome. Um, it's been an amazing uh, journey you've been on, Owen, for the last you know with the senior team we call it the senior team now like you know and it's great actually within the club you know we don't call it the intermediate team or the junior team we can now actually finally call it the senior team you know which is good but it has been an amazing journey over the last few years hasn't it yeah it has uh, and we've been extremely fortunate you know um i suppose like from my own point of view you know we won a novice championship in 2010 uh the novice isn't, isn't even a championship any, anymore there's a lot of our current players who are in primary school um but since that, the club has really gone from strength to strength, and uh, you know, a lot of thanks must go to the different management teams and the different players that have come and gone. And we've they, they've all kind of progressed in, in their own way. So I'm um, extremely grateful to all of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. All right, yeah. Um, what would you say the plans for 2022 would be? I know it's very hard to, you know, you're coming back down off an All Ireland semi final, and uh, but surely you've discussed it like um, in in what you want to achieve like any plan you want to achieve something yeah absolutely like um, definitely have goals for the year ahead and you know it's been well publicised now going into the county league um, we'll be without a number of players due to representation with Kerry different Kerry squads and uh, I suppose it's, it's a good problem to have for the club but it definitely does create space um, for other fellas to put their hands up and um, get a good consistent run of games um, so hopefully we'll Reap the, reap the benefits of that later on in the season. Yeah, yeah, you're right there, yeah. Owen, we have a very large panel of players out there on the senior team, and thanks be to God at underage levels as well. Like, it's a delight to look at different age levels and things like that. Like, you know, I include the junior team as well. Like, you know, um, but even uh, even with the large panels, like we're very thankful to Abby Dorney for having for all the all the you know it's fantastic to get some of the great yeah, players yeah. that we've had from Abby Dorney. They must have a great influence on the team. Oh, absolutely! Like you you look at our, our senior men's squad now, and uh, a lot of our key players are Abby Dorney men, and you know it has to be said like they're, they'll always be amongst the bravest, the most committed. Their attitude is always exemplary, so they're an absolute credit to their club. Uh, to, to both ourselves and to Abby Dorney and um, we're very very thankful to Abby Dorney for being so accommodating and uh, to keep those kind of communication lines open with us and do you know what we, we'd love to see them pick up the Neil Flynn trophy this year and we'd be the first people out there celebrating with them so Indeed, um, yeah. Yeah, very yeah, very yeah. thankful to Abby yeah, Dorney yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay we'll just bring the discussion on to general fitness now um, no, we're, we're, we're blessed with a fantastic senior pitch here. We're blessed with a, a fine gym. Do you know, we have training pitches as well. Of course, everybody inside the club would love to have a second pitch uh, fully floodlit, like, you know, to increase uh, fitness levels. But, like, Dave, I'll just move on to you for a second there. Like, you know, um, how long have you been trading so far this year? Like, um, and what's, what's, your, what's your go time, really? So you need to be fit for a certain time like are your first senior game in March or is it yeah I, I suppose kind of our league starts around the start of March kind of do, and what, over those the next few months um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then championship would be further out then probably depending on yeah, how yeah, Kerry yeah. get on um, but yeah we're back training with the last few weeks kind of gym, in the gym twice a week initially and now yeah. in back on training yeah, on the yeah. field so that's good but yeah, yeah. yeah the, the fitness work at this stage of the year um, definitely, hopefully, will stand it to us yeah, going forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the even at underage levels, like you know, I I, I look at the increase. I, I always think myself that like from six under 16s or 17s minors under 20s and things like that uh, before like it was just a matter of them just going out playing football and because of their youthful enthusiasm they'll be fit anyway mm -hmm. but uh, that's kind of increased really and I know yourself Maeve like it's fantastic to see the amount of work you put into the underage levels down here as well like you know but there's not really a fitness level for underage really is there 
No, I suppose at underage it's about getting them out, getting them playing, getting the numbers involved and like like you were saying earlier, it's great to see so many young girls and young boys yeah, as well yeah. on the Sunday mornings enjoying the football and I suppose it's all about building skills at that age and getting yeah. them out having fun. I think having fun, if they're having fun, yeah, um, yeah. that's that's what it's all yeah, about yeah. really. Um, yeah, yeah. And then as you get older, the fitness, yeah. <laughs> fitness drops <laughs> well, into it and, us, yeah, and yeah. gets more and more important. But, <laughs> um, oh, and I'll just ask you, if you don't mind, um, like we're a senior team now. Um, does that mean we have to play more um, mindful, be more mindful of the fitness levels that we're at? Or would the fitness level of a Division 2 footballer be the same as a, the fitness level of a Division 1 footballer? Yeah. It would have to be better. Well, the way I look at it, like as you go through the levels, you know, there's, there, there would obviously be kind of an increased demand um, on the body. You know, there's an increased workload. And over the last few years, you know, our senior team would have put a lot of emphasis on strength and conditioning as a way of kind of helping the body withstand that extra workload and hopefully kind of reduce the chances of injury. Um, and you know that, that's that's really it. Like trying to keep fellas on the pitch as much as possible. Um, and recovery is important. As recovery well. is huge. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think it should be said there's been massive investment by the club into our gym. And you know I'd imagine we're the envy of a lot of uh, clubs around the county. There's a lot of equipment there, and it's it's very easy to run group sessions uh, now at the moment. Um, it should also be said that uh, they've brought in Owen Joy to oversee. Uh, a bit of foundational strength and conditioning for the under 15s, 17s, just to kind of make sure that um, the lifts are being done safely and correctly. And you know, it's given them a good foundation uh, as they move forward with the careers, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. hopefully it can help keep them injury free and, as I said, on the pitch as much as possible. Yeah, thanks very much, Sean. Thank you, Maeve. Uh, and now we'll just go over to little, a few little short videos on Nigel Heroes. Thank you. Good morning. Now tell me your name. Good morning. My name is Bernie Kenty. And where are you from, Bernie? From Brosna, originally. And and now I live in Tralee, Racecourse Lawn. Very good. And what's your occupation? Homemaker, with many more jobs. And what's your history with the Gwail? Well, we moved to Tralee some years back and my son wanted to play football, so I brought him here. It's about eight years ago now. And we're still here, still loving it. And have you any other jobs with the Gwail? Um, well, I'm involved with the underage, I help out, and at the moment it's on the, we're on the 15s, so I help out there, I do the text messaging and that, the organising. Very good, and what would you like to see for the future for Nigel? Um, for Nigel, it's a great club, a uh, brilliant club actually to be part of, great community, great um, like family spirits, like a big family. Uh, for the future I'd like to see us expand more and um, no doubt that we will win a non-Ireland final, senior. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Now tell us your name. Joe Clifford. And where are you from, Joe? I live in Trilly for the past 37 years, but I'm originally from this dry out near Killarney direction. Yeah. Right. And what's your occupation? I'm retired, thankfully. And what's your history with Nguyen? Well, I got involved with Nguyen back in 90, about 1993-1994, in particular with an under-14 football team because my own sons were around that age at that point in time and then I suppose back in about two, the year 2000 I got involved with the development of, of our pitch in terms of building the wall around the pitch, doing the senior pitch, the juvenile pitch and the training area. At that time, at the time we built one dressing room and then in 2009 we built a second room, dressing room to cater for the lady members of the club and we did a car park and all that. But my main part involvement in the club I guess was the development in that period of time from I suppose 2000 on for about seven or eight years, yeah. Okay, and would you have any um, history with your own club? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I played football with Lestrade, but I was also interested in athletics at the time, but I won an East Kerry, um, Lestrade won the East Kerry Football Championship in 1970, so I'm not doing a cup medal from, from, that, from that particular year. Fantastic, and, and what would you like to see for the future for the Wales? Well, I suppose um, we've got so many members in the club now between um, boys and girls and men and women that we'll probably it'll be tight in facilities and hopefully as time goes on we'll be able to get a bit of land somewhere and develop it and have another playing pitch for the club. That's what I would like to see happen. I think it has been a wonderful year for the club as well, um, getting promoted to the senior uh, ranks. Long time coming but well deserved and it's really great for the club. Thank you, Joe. Good evening. Now tell us your name. Günther. Günther Sieg. 
And where are you from, Gunther? I was born in uh, communist uh, Poland. In 1967, I moved to uh, West Germany. Then West Germany. Finished my school in Germany. And uh, finished my army training. Then I moved to uh, South Africa. Lived 11 years in South Africa. <laughs> then moved back to uh, Germany. And through, the, through work, I moved to uh, Ireland and live here for the last 22 years. Excellent. And what's your occupation? My occupation is a machine mechanic. In a moment, uh, retired. Right. And where were you working as a machine mechanic? Uh, I worked at uh, Peru Electronics and later uh, turned into Borg Warner. And what's your history with the world? Well, when I moved uh, to Ireland, I moved across the road. That was 22 years ago, and I'm coming here since. Excellent. And what would you like to see for the future for the world? Oh, well, I'd, I'd like the senior team to do well. The junior t team is doing okay. Excellent. Thank you, Gunther. Hello and welcome back. Uh, thank you to everyone for watching today's show. I'd like to thank Maeve and Owen very much for coming down here today on a beautiful day to, uh, to, to, to be our guests and inform us of things. Um, tune in again next week when we'll have uh, two further guests, uh, which will be interesting because we're just about the start of the senior men's and ladies uh, football season. Now we'll just have a quick run through the club notices after this and don't forget the full notes are available on newspapers and on our website nigail.ie and don't forget uh, Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment as well. And don't forget to be a hero, just get involved. Thank you very much.